So let's look at some different example problems of simplifying square roots of negative numbers. So in this example, we have the square roots of minus 48. And the general strategy for approaching these problems where we're simplifying the square root is to first separate it into the square root of minus 1 multiplied by 48. And the reason we do this is so that we get a product here. Since if we have a product underneath the square root, we can separate that into a product of two different square roots. So the square root of minus 1 multiplied by the square root of 48. And we know that our imaginary unit here, i, is just the square root of minus 1. So we can replace this square root here with just i. And at this point, we need to express our answer in its most simplified form. So we need to simplify the square root of 48. And 48 is not a perfect square. It's not some number squared. So we need to make a tree to try and simplify this. So 48 is a product of 6 times 8. Now you could also use 4 and 12 or another pair of numbers that multiply to 48. And generally my advice for these is to just find the two numbers that come to your mind first and use those. Since once you write down two numbers that multiply to 48, you're going to just break these numbers down further so that you end up with all prime factors. So 6 is really just a product of 3 and 2, and 8 is a product of 2 and 4, and then once you get down to prime numbers, you can circle them if you want, just to signify the end of the tree, and then 4 is a product of 2 and 2. So 48, notice, we multiply 2 four different times, so 48 is really 2 to the 4th, and then also multiplied by 3. And in general, it's a good idea to separate these into pairs. So instead of having four 2's multiplied together, we can have two 2's, or 2 squared, multiplied by two more 2's. And the reason we want to do this is that when we simplify this square root here, the square root of 48, we can break it up into a bunch of perfect squares. So 48 is just 2 squared times 2 squared times 3. And we can separate this product into individual square roots. So we get i multiplied by the square root of 2 squared, multiplied by the square root of 2 squared, and then multiplied by root 3. And the square root of 2 squared, or the square root of 4, is just 2. So essentially, the square root and the square are going to cancel each other out, which is why it's beneficial to write these as perfect squares underneath the square root. So we get i multiplied by 2, and then this is also equal to 2, and we still have the square root of 3, since this is not a perfect square. So the square root of 3 is an irrational number. It's like 1.73 and so on. It's an infinitely long decimal without a pattern. So at this point, we can simplify this. And it's convention to write the numbers first before the imaginary unit i. So 2 times 2 is 4. So we get 4 times by the square root of 3. And all of this is multiplied by i. And again, remember, it's important that you do not write this i underneath the square root. So if you want, you can put a little mark there just to signify the end of the square root. Only 3 is underneath this. And at this point, we can write our answer into the box. So the square root of minus 48, or I should say plus or minus the square root of minus 48, is plus or minus 4 root 3 multiplied by i. And let's do another example problem. So this one, we have the square root of minus 66. So let's first rewrite it. And first, we need to get the negative out of the square root. So we're going to separate this into the square root of minus 1 multiplied by 66. And since we have a product, we can break it up into a product of two square roots where we know that i is just the square root of minus 1. So we're going to make that replacement here. So we get i multiplied by root 66. And we can see if we can simplify the square root of 66. 
So let's make a tree for that. And since it's less than 100 and the digits repeat, we know it's a multiple of 11. So this is really just 11 times 6. And 11 is a prime number. And 6 breaks down into 3 times 2. So 66 is really 2 times 3 times 11. And since there are no perfect squares here, all of these are to the first power, we won't be able to simplify the square root. So the square root of 66 is actually written in its most simplified form. If one of these was squared, then we can actually take a square root of that and get a whole number. But since everything is to the first power, if we try to take a square root of any of these, 2, 3, or 11, then we're just going to get irrational numbers. So square root of 66 is fully simplified. And so this would be our final answer. So in our box, plus or minus the square root of minus 66 is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 66. So in general with these problems, if we have, let's say, the square root of minus 115, then we can just rewrite this as i times the square root of 115. Since we can just follow this logic here where we separate it into the square root of minus 1 multiplied by 115. And since we have a product, we can separate that into two square roots multiplied together. And we know the square root of minus 1 is just i. So if we want to write this as generally as possible, we can say that when we have the square root of minus a, where a is some positive number, then this is just equal to i multiplied by the square root of a. And from here, you can try to simplify the square root of a as much as possible. Sometimes it can be simplified, like the previous example when we had the square root of 48. But often, it can't be simplified further, just like this example here.